The Mi-24 is one of the most admired and feared attack helicopters with its impressive appearance and high weapon carrying capacity. This flying beast, whose NATO reporting name is Hind, has proven itself in major battles in many parts of the world. The helicopter, which can still find new users with its new models, left its mark on half a century both militarily and culturally. Now, we're investigating the Mi-24, a true attack helicopter legend. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start, and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Preferred by more than 60 countries, the Mi-24 is the most widely used helicopter and has fought in many parts of the world. It has been an important system that couldn't be ignored not only by Western military planners but also by Hollywood. Don't you think a Puma that resembles the Mi-24 deserved the award for the best supporting actor and made Rambo 2 and Rambo 3 a part of the list of legendary movies too? And isn't it possible to see its impact even in the struggle for life and death between Jedi and Sith in a galaxy far, far away? Although it has become a legend today, in the beginning, the faith of the Soviet military planners about the Mi-24 was very low. In the early 1960s, the Soviet mill company started to work on an innovative system which was basically a flying infantry fighting vehicle. It meant that the new helicopter should be able to perform both fire support and infantry transport duties. In 1966, Mill unveiled a mock-up to demonstrate its new concept. The value of this new concept was immediately apparent to some, but many were skeptical of it. Yet, the US Army's successful use of gunship helicopters in Vietnam ended the debate between these two groups in a short time. Thus, Mill presented two conceptual designs. One was the comparatively small and single-engined, and the other was the heavy and twin-engine. Kamov also offered a version of the KA-25 naval helicopter as a low-cost solution for this requirement. After extensive consideration, in 1968, the Soviet Army's preference was MIL's heavy helicopter concept. Flight tests of MIL's helicopter prototype began one year later. In simple term, it was a highly modified Mi-8, whose NATO reporting name is HIP, for gunship helicopter role. Many airframe components and subcomponent came from Mi-8 and its naval variant Mi-14, whose NATO reporting name is Hayes. In 1970, acceptance tests started. After 18 months of trials, many changes were required. For example, the fuselage was strengthened to solve fatigue problems and vibration levels. The position of anti-tank missile pylons was moved from the fuselage to the wingtips. After these changes, the mass production of the helicopter, now called Mi-24A, started in 1970. It became operational in 1972. However, the Mi-24A was more like a test platform than a real gunship helicopter. While mass production of this model continued, the mill engineers had to deal with many design flaws. For example, the three-blade tail rotor, which was on the starboard in the first production versions of the Mi-24A, had been repositioned to the port side to increase efficiency in later models. Also, the design of the cockpit was causing an inadequate view for the pilot. The Mi-24D, whose mass production began in 1973, has ended these problems. Unlike its predecessor, this model has a tandem cockpit with a double bubble canopy. The rear seat is 30 cm higher than the front. All later versions of the helicopter have this configuration. The pilot and the gunner sit inside the titanium armored tub in the cockpit. Their windscreens are bulletproof. In an emergency, the gunner can also fly the helicopter. Thanks to the overpressurized cockpit and troop compartment, the helicopter can be operated in an NBC environment. The armored fuselage and the titanium rotor blades are resistant against 12.7mm rounds. There are three pylons on the mid-mounted stub wings. 
at high speed, they provide considerable lift. The design of airframe has high aerodynamic efficiency. Also, the MI-24 fitted with retractable landing gear to reduce drag. These features make the helicopter fast. Unlike other attack helicopters, the MI-24 is capable of carrying 8 infantry. However, experiences during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan showed that this capability didn't work as expected. For the Soviet MI-24 crew members fighting in Afghanistan, both engaging on targets and thinking about the safety of the transported soldiers had been too much of a burden. Besides, carrying 8 soldiers and the armor plates in the troop compartment decreased the performance of the helicopter as it increased the weight. To overcome these problems, the Soviet army started to use MI-24s in fire support missions and the MI-8s in troop transport missions. It has been observed that carrying a technician with additional fuel and ammunition in his compartment allows the MI-24s to be used longer and more effectively. Also, carrying a technician who handles a light machine gun in a window port was providing the MI-24 the ability to watch its back while leaving a target area. Depending on its model, the MI-24 is equipped with different weapons. The MI-24A had a one-man operated machine gun on its nose. The MI-24D version has a 4-barrel 12.7mm machine gun mounted for the turret, while the MI-24P model has a 30mm twin-barreled cannon in a fixed position on its right. The MI-24VP has a 23mm twin-barrel gun. In the beginning, the Soviet Army planned to use the 9K-114 Sturm anti-tank missiles whose NATO reporting name is AT-6 Spiral with the MI-24s. However, due to the delay in the development of this missile, the helicopter was first equipped with the 3M11 Falanga. Yet, this missile, whose NATO reporting name was AT-2 Swatter, was obsolete in those years. For this reason, many users have equipped their MI-24s with the 9M14 Malutka whose NATO reporting name is AT-3 Sager. In the following period, the helicopter has gained the capability of firing the 9K-114. Today, modernized MI-24s can use high-capability anti-tank missiles such as the 9M120 Ataka, whose NATO reporting name is AT-9 Spiral 2. The helicopter has a two-man crew. Many countries have also added a technician to the crew. The MI-24 can carry 8 infantries. The fuselage has a length of 17.51 meters and a total length of the helicopter is 19.79 meters. Its rotor diameter is 17.3 meters while its height is about 5.47 meters. With an empty weight of 7,580 kilograms, the maximum takeoff weight is 11,500 kilograms. Two 1,600 kW TV3-117V turboshaft engines provide a maximum speed of 310 km per hour. The cruising speed of the helicopter is 270 km per hour. The MI-24, which has a range of 450 km, can reach a range of 1,000 km with external fuel tanks. Its service ceiling is 4,950 meters, while its hover ceiling is 1,400 meters. As we mentioned earlier, the weapons of the MI-24 differs depending on its models. The helicopter has many production and modernized variants. Since it will take a lot of time to talk about all of them, we will focus on some major versions. Export models of the MI-24s are called MI-35. The MI-25 is the simplified and low-cost version specifically for third world use. The MI-24 Superhind Mark III is the modernized version of the helicopter by Paramount Advanced Technologies of South Africa. This variant has a 20mm Vector F2 gun in a new chin turret with an external ammunition storage. The helicopter can fire the long-range laser-guided ZT-3 Ingwe anti-tank missile. The Superhind Mark IV model is equipped with the Ukrainian Barrier anti-tank missile. The MI-24VM has non-retractable landing gear and shortened wings. 
there are two pylons under the wings instead of three. This variant has elastomeric bearings, composite main rotor blades, and X-shaped tail rotor, same as MI-28. The helicopter uses a Klimov VK-25002 turboshaft engines, which provide better high-altitude performance. The avionics and electro-optic surveillance systems are also modernized. Even though the USSR planned to replace the Mi-24s with a new attack helicopter in the 1970s due to its low anti-tank capacity, it proved itself as indispensable in many battles. The Mi-24 was used in combat for the first time by Ethiopia during the Ogaden War. The helicopters were one of the key weapon systems for Ethiopian victory over Somalia. But the Mi-24 gained its real reputation during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. In the early stages of the war, it was a weapon of terror for the Mujahideen. Once an Mi-24 scared a group of Mujahideen away by just maneuvering aggressively to rescue a company of infantry. However, the helicopter had been out of ammunition. Besides escorting troop helicopters and providing air support for ground forces, the Mi-24s were protecting land convoys against ambushes. The Soviet Army was additionally using them for hunter-killer operations. The Mi-24 hunter-killer groups were consisting of a minimum of two helicopters. More often, the Soviet Army preferred the groups of four or eight Mi-24s to provide mutual fire support. The Mujahideen could occasionally counter the Mi-24s with RPG-type weapons and machine guns heavier than 12.7 mm. However, these efforts were rare and unproductive. After a while, the balances changed with the Stinger and Red Eye missiles that came with the US assistance. Now, it was time for the Mi-24s to be scared. According to Russian sources, 27 Mi-24s were shot down by these missiles in Afghanistan, but Western sources estimate that this number is much higher. Although they were the nightmare of the Iranian infantry during the Iran-Iraq war, the Iraqi Mi-25s were quite insufficient for anti-tank missions. To overcome this problem, the Iraqis started to use them in hunter-killer groups together with the Gazelle carrying the HUT missiles. While the Mi-25s were dealing with the infantry and air defense troops, the Gazelles were attacking to tanks. During this war, the Iraqi Mi-25s conducted many air-to-air -air helicopter combats. According to some sources, during the war, the Heinz claimed 10 victories against AH-1s in exchange of 6 lost. Even once an Iraqi Mi-24D managed to shut down an Iranian F-4 Phantom II using S-5 unguided rockets. Iraqi Mi-25s also claimed 43 kills against other Iranian helicopters such as UH-1s. It is claimed that in 1992, a Russian Mi-24 VP shot down a Georgian Su-25 using a 9K-114 anti-tank missile. While in the 1980s, many analysts thought that the modern attack helicopters overshadowed the Mi-24, it has shined brighter once again after 1990s. After the end of the first Cold War, many African countries that needed an aircraft for counterinsurgency missions began to acquire the surplus Heinz. The Mi-24s have played important roles in all corners of this continent. The Mi-24 is still successfully fighting in Africa, as well as Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria. It is an indispensable helicopter. In fact, Russia, which announced that it would replace the Hind fleet with the Mi-28s and Ka-52s by 2015, changed this decision. The Russian Mi-24s are being modernized and will continue to instill fear in their enemies for many years to come. The helicopter is continuing to add new pages to its saga. The combat-proven impressive beast, Mi-24, deserves to be called a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button.